everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, July 23rd. Courtney, also, just a few more days of the month. <laughs> I know, I know. Also, Friday Eve. Friday Eve. Cheers oh. to Friday Eve. Gosh, I love when our staff puts this stuff together you, for us. We had a dry spell here at the show for a long time, especially when you were doing the show from home. So I'm glad that things are sort of back to normal these days with booze on set. Two days in a row. <laughs> Two days in a row. <laughs> and this is compliments at one of our favorite spots in town, Postino. Love we it. We visit Postino all the time. We love their boards. We love their wine deals. It's always happy hour, so everything's half off. But they are doing something really cool in honor of this Saturday's Wine and Cheese Day. I know. This is going to be really great. And it's so awesome because you can pick it up to go because National Wine and Cheese Board Play uh, Day, right? I'm guessing. I'm uh, Hopefully, I'm saying wine that right. Wine and Cheese Day. But wine and Cheese Day. Cheese boards. Charcuterie boards. Everybody loves a good charcuterie, or security, as my kids like to call it. Security. The security board. We're going to need a security board at the pool. Um, <laughs> but I love this because Heights and Montrose, of course, for Postino, mm -hmm. um, they are offering, of course, $5 glasses of wine until 5 p.m. Um, but you could pick this up on Saturday to help celebrate National Wine and Cheese Day. And what's great is they have all these to-go kits. So we actually have a bunch of them here. We couldn't fit them all on the desk. But this is just one of the kits. There's also, like, this sparkling wine kit that comes with a little tote bag and a grapefruit and then another four pack. So no matter what you're in the mood for, they can hook you up and it's a great deal. Absolutely. Four ways to rosé is another one. What I think is so great is I think so many of us, um, my best friend Lori, she makes this great cheese board all the time. My friend Allie, who's a chef, she comes up with these amazing things. But it's so nice to just have it ready to go and just kind of set it up. I'm all about outsourcing. I love outsourcing. <laughs> well, and honestly, when you think about it, the time that it actually takes, especially now with COVID and going to the grocery store is kind of a big production, right? Right. By the time you go and buy everything separately and spend all the money doing that, you've actually probably spent a little more money doing that. Well, and I have an editing problem, so I always I always you go with everything. the more is more because, you know, well, of course now I'm going to need chocolate on there and then I, of course well, I need three different need kinds this. of crackers because what if that person doesn't like my cracker? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to have a lot, so I like the fact that this is just ready to go. It's ready to go. Is each kit, each kit $45? Is that the way it works? Do we know this? Do we know the price of the kits? If you do want to go to the locations, um, $5 glasses of wine until 5 p.m. I'm telling you, they have a great happy hour. They really do, and it's a great location. I love the Heights location because it's right there. You could walk there if you live nearby because there's all the walking and bike paths, and it's just very, very neighborhood friendly. We also haven't really been dining out at all. No. But, I mean, remember how things, like, started opening up and then they closed back down, and then, I mean, I'm so confused. I don't know what day it is. But when things slowly started opening or restaurants opened at 25 percent capacity we actually went to the postino and montrose yeah and it was great because the staff they were all masked up every other table was blocked off so you know the closest table was like a mile away right and uh and again like our whole bill was so cheap i'm always stunned at how cheap that place is we picked up dinner last night uh well i i picked up dinner last night and um was talking to the guy who came out to my car to deliver um the to-go order and i said how's it going you know and he said well we, we were we were kind of, you know, gaining some steam and momentum, and now I feel like we're kind of back off again. I think people are really afraid to go out. And um, and, and if that's the case, then try to do takeout maybe once, if you can, a yeah. week, and, and pick the neighborhood spots that you want to stay open. Um, and that's kind of what we do. Normally, we cook a lot at home, um, but Fridays is always kind of takeout Mexican food, or uh, yesterday was just kind of like all over the place, so we needed something. But um, it just it kind of breaks my heart a little bit to know that these places that have been here a long time or even just newly opened, yeah. you know? So trying to do our part, and this is one way to do that. Postino, just grab and go on Saturday if you'd like to celebrate Wine and Cheese Day. Yeah, and you said it. It's restaurants that have been around for a long time, businesses that you never could even have imagined would be struggling uh, or having a really hard time. So certainly, I mean, we're in this strange, sticky spot where it's right. like you want to go out and support business, but you feel weird about it. So takeout is a great option if you don't feel comfortable comfortable and uh, and drink up. I do want to give a sweet shout out to Jamie too, who I, I don't I guess Jamie works at Postino now, but Jamie used to be my bartender when I first moved here to Houston. You have your own personal bartender? Well, I know. I'm very did I not tell you wow, this? Oh is this fancy the first time pants. really <laughs> No, I wish. No idea. I mean I felt like Jamie was my personal bartender, but he worked at the Ivy in River Oaks, the apartment right. building. And next door Jamie's husband Joe was the bartender there. Speaking of to go drink. Thanks.
I would go down to that bar. I would get to go drinks and take them back upstairs, have a little party. So, Jamie, thank you for your note. I miss you, buddy. Say hi to Joe. That was so nice. I love when you get kind of surprises like that. It just lifts your day up a little bit. It's nice to see an old friend. Absolutely. Also, guys, coming up a little bit later in the show, if you're ever wondering, like, what to pair with what, oh, my word, Tangi is here, and she's got stuff, wine that will pair with just crackers, Cheez-Its, y'all. I love me some Cheez-Its. Lori and I, best friend Lori, oh. extra toasty Cheez-Its or flip side crackers. Have you ever had flip sides? No, what are they? One side's a pretzel, one side's kind of like a Ritz cracker. What? I know. Your world's just got better. One side is a pretzel? I'll bring it in for you tomorrow. Once you try one, you're hooked. Do you dip it in something or you just eat? You don't have to. You could do hummus. You could do whatever you want. It's new on my security board now because of Lori putting it on her board. <laughs> <laughs> on your security board. I know. Please do us a favor. Call Postino and ask for a security board. Please do. I'd like the security board. <laughs> <laughs> with some wine to go. It's fun, right? The boys love saying it. It just it makes is so me laugh. Fancy. But, um, so it'll be fun to see what Tangi has in store for us. Well, and what I love about it is if you don't have the inclination to either create your own charcuterie board or, or go and buy one um, to go, it is great that you can pair things like mac and cheese sandwiches or cheese sandwiches. <laughs> Mac and cheese sandwiches. That sounds really good. That sounds like That's a, a carb carbohydrate overlay. festival <laughs> right there. Put any mac and cheese on anything, I'll eat it. Seriously. Do you know one of my favorite foods? And I don't know why we never do this at our house. A nice grilled cheese, oh, a bowl of tomato, tomato soup, soup, and a pickle. And Brandon always makes mm. fun of me because I come home from Costco and have these giant jars of pickles. Love them. Well, guess what? He goes to the fridge like three times a day, pulls out that giant jar of pickles, and just goes to town. He'll even drink the pickle juice. Well, pickle juice is good for you. What does it do for you? Uh, it helps with cramping. So if you, you know, my mom used to get Charlie horses all the time, yeah. and so uh, marathon runners, things like, you know, athletes, uh, football players that normally would be doing two a days here shortly, a lot of pickle juice and things like that. That's so it helps right. with electrolytes. Yeah. Um, but my mom would get Charlie horses. Hi, mom. I know you're watching in Arizona. Hi, Eileen. Um, we miss you. She would drink pickle juice all the time. Huh? I yeah. think you told me this before. It's all coming back to me now, Celine Dion. It's, I knew that I had heard this somewhere, and of course, it was right here on Houston Life. We Always. teach people all kinds of interesting things, and we learn stuff all, all the time. All the time. I know. From each other. Okay, so I want, we want to ask you guys, speaking of like being cheesy today, because we've had like lots of cheese talk, um, what wine would you be and why? We need to know that, the answer to that question on our Facebook page. What wine would you be? Um, Do you know? I would probably be like a really old rotten vintage because Stop sometimes the cork it. just falls apart and people run away holding their noses. Stop it. That's not true. I don't know. I mean, what kind of question is this? I would say probably a bottle of um, cheap rosé bubbles. I don't think you're cheap. But I'm a lot of fun. I know. <laughs> the cheaper you are, the more of you there is to go around, right? So I know. buy two or three bottles. I know. I don't know. I don't know what I would be. Maybe some bubbles, because you know. Why? I don't know. I'm bubbly sometimes. Not really. Yeah, Maybe we should have asked each other what we would be. You're pretty bubbly. We spent no time thinking about Zero. this question at all, clearly. But I think we have somebody that actually posted on our website already. Who was it? Was it Corey? Oh, I yeah. can't see that. Yeah, there so. she is. Any sweet California Zinfandel, sweet as long as you're sweet to me, but just know mama can carry a strong fun. Yes, I'm with you, Corey. <laughs> That's I hear awesome. you. Absolutely. Very nice. Do we have some more comments we're going to get to, guys? It looks like uh, Lisa is saying, torn between sparkling rosé and Prosecco, both match her bubbly personality. Okay, well, that's fair. I know. And uh, Demontron RV says, Cabernet Sauvignon, full-bodied like our RVs. Ooh. Yeah. Do you think they'll let me uh, go just sit in the RVs up at DeMontrand? They are so fancy now. I love, RVs know, do these things now, like they expand. I'm like, is yeah, this a spaceship with wheels or what? I want to sit on one where I have to like really, you know, use two hands to turn the wheel. Like a, like one of those. Like a bus driver. Yes. Like one of those old buses where the wheel really yes. goes around. But don't ask me to drive it on an actual street because that would be very bad. Very bad situation. Remember how long it took me to get my driver's license? I'm just saying a giant vehicle like that? Yeah. Probably we, not good. So years ago, this was like three years ago, and this was before you had joined Houston Life. It was a few months before you had joined. We did a week's worth of shows in Galveston. <laughs> I 
like, <laughs> I was going after your energy, and I could feel you <laughs> about ready to lose it. What's going on? I don't even know why I'm laughing. It was really good television, <laughs> in case you missed it. <laughs> but the thing was, a big storm. So we are a live show here at Houston Live. Mm -hmm. we're, we're total. Yes, it's 1:10 p.m. in 34 seconds. 1:10 p.m. Yes, p.m. What is wrong with you? So, the problem was when we went to Galveston, we weren't going to do the show live from Galveston every day because we were set up in Sanger Fest Park, and it was like a big operation. Right. Doing a show from a park, it's like we had to set up a stage and lights and sound, and there were chairs in the audience. And if you were in that audience, I am so sorry. <laughs> So we're like, come and watch the show. It's going to be it's really be fun. Amazing. Well, nine hours later, when we were like still waiting to start, and the problem was a big storm was coming in. The, the plan was we would tape three shows on Saturday and two shows on Sunday. Miranda, you remember this. Everyone here on staff remembers it. We're still in therapy for it. And the problem was on Sunday, a big storm was rolling in. So we had to tape, tape, right? five shows all in one day. Well, oh, Lord. by the time we got to Thursday, it was dark. And by the time we got to Friday, it was really, really dark. Oh, man. So what do you say? It's one, you're acting like it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> yeah, we're Light them like, up. Welcome to Houston Light Life. <laughs> it's dark outside. <laughs> Big storm in Galveston. Don't ask too many questions. But my point of the story is that, to add to the weirdness, I was given the responsibility, Derek, right? Derek Shore. Hi, 53 foot RV. I had to pick up from like Bush Airport and drive it all the way down to Galveston. And that was gonna be. <laughs> that was. And that was gonna be like our control room, like central command, where, you know, we could look at all the shots and whatever. But I remember driving this oh, RV down 45 word. and just thinking, like, really Why am examining I here? my life choices. <laughs> Did I really accept this I was job? Like, I had a perfectly good job a while back, and now I'm driving an RV to Galveston. And by the way, the parking space was like two inches. Right, long. it was I a mean, compact car. We had like car. an inch on either side. Oh, my word. I don't know how we didn't. And Aaron Montoya and Stephanie Gary, oh. they guided us into that. They guided me into that parking space. Oh. But anyway, so I need a bit of healing from that RV experience, right. which is why, Demontron, if we could just come up and have a glass of wine in one of the RVs. And not move. It would go a long we don't way. Wanna, we don't want to take it out of the parking lot. <laughs> you could do it. I think you could do it. You don't need a special license. I know. Or but if you do. I mean, I'm so I short, and I had to put blocks on those, like, <laughs> gas pedal. You never had problems, like, reaching the pedals in your car, have you? No, but, I mean, I used to be able to stand up in the live trucks here, in the back. Stand up. Wow. I mean, used to be. I, I'm sure it's the same truck, so I could still go out there and stand in it today. That is, that's really convenient. It's very convenient, especially because there's no chairs in the back. You know, there's no place to sit. In the live truck? Mm -mm. Isn't there room for like a folding chair? I think so, but then there's gear and everything else, so I don't remember. I just, you know. The life of a reporter, <sighs> I mean, it's tough. It's, it's I've been so out tough. there in the field and you too. We've talked about this so many times where like you go out to do your live shot for the 4, 5, 6 p.m., 10 p.m. news, yes. or early morning, like 4.30 a.m., and it's like you, there's no bathroom, there's no cafeteria. You are just like out there and out you have there. to look semi-decent when you go live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what's a crazy, this is a crazy story, and I don't know if I've ever told you guys the story or you. Um, this, I, this was in um, early um, 2007, okay. and John Treadgold and I, who was a longtime photographer here since uh, retired, and um, we were on some sort of scene, active scene here in Houston, shots fired, SWAT was there, we roll up, and of course you're in the neighborhood, you're just trying to like get your story, and um, so we're all kind of standing around, we all meaning all the, everybody. There's photographers, reporters everywhere. People from the neighborhood. Yeah, people from the neighborhood happened. trying to figure out what's going on. SWAT is now set up, and I, we were standing in someone's front lawn, close to where the SWAT situation where they thought this person was in the home, and they weren't sure um, because he had run into, run through the neighborhood, and, and thought maybe he had gone into a, a home with a door open or oh, a window wow. open or something like that. And John and I were standing there talking, and all of a sudden, 
shots were fired from that house and he grabbed me and pu pushed me down into the bushes in front of this house and for the first time in my very long tenured career of being a reporter, general assignment reporter, I was scared because I've been in so many situations before. I've been hit by a car on a scene. I mean, all of these things have happened to me. Wow. But in that moment, I looked at him and I said, and I, he was kind of hovering on top of me. He has camera and everything. And I looked up at him and I said, I'm pregnant. No one knew I was pregnant with Connor because it was very early on in my pregnancy and I just started to like lose it. And it was the first time that I actually realized like what I was doing. Now I've got, I have a baby, you know, yeah. like it was this weird. So you felt extra vulnerable. Extra vulnerable. And I got to tell you, he was so amazing. And, but like your world around you, everything just went silent. And he was like, you're going to be fine. It's going to be good. Like he, I, I'm sure he, he's a dad. He has children and a wife. And, you know, it was just one of those. But in those situations, how many times we put ourselves in this world to get a story and, oh, my. Like, I still can't believe the amount of things that I've done and seen over the years. Yeah, but and you just sort of accept it as normal. But anytime gunshots ring out, that's got to be terrifying. So weird. Well, I'm glad you're yeah, okay. Anyway, all is good. Cheers. Oh, I feel like my heart's beating a little oh, faster now. I I'm know. feeling kind of nervous. Can you think of like some nice old stories that you can share from the field? Maybe we could end the show with a, an uplifting. I'll think of something. You know me, I don't have a very good memory. So I'll come up with something. What day is it? What time is it? What are we doing here? Okay, so 1.17 p.m. just about. And don't forget, call our friends over at Postino and hook yourselves up for... For Saturday, yeah. Yes. Or tonight. Try it tonight and figure out what you want for Wine and Cheese Day on Saturday. Wine and Cheese Day. And $5 glasses of wine, um, Uber there and home is all we can say. And as long as we're talking about wine and pairings, let's continue this conversation about what to pair it with. Tangy Patton, she always has the answers. And she says, no cheese plate, no problem. She's got some everyday comfort food and wine pairings, like which wine complements a cheeseburger, grilled mac and cheese oh. sandwich, even cheese crackers. As we mentioned, we're going to hear about that coming up. She always has the greatest finds, for sure. Also, guys, Sawyer Yards Drive-In Movie Theater. Do you all miss going to the movies? I do. Well, how about enjoying a contact-free movie experience? Rooftop Cinema Club is behind the drive-in at the Sawyer your yards. We've, they've reimagined their approach to ensure guests have a safe experience from the security of their own vehicles. And our girl Lauren Kelly is going to get the scoop on tickets, the movie lineup, and even a peek at that projector they use to show the movies. That is so cool. Looking forward to that. And still ahead on Houston Life, when it comes to preparing for hurricane season, have you included your pets in that emergency plan? We'll have five tips you need to know to keep those pups safe. Oh, Next. That guy looks familiar. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Cheers. Welcome back. You're probably aware by now that there's a tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico headed straight for Texas. It is a great reminder to prepare ourselves and our dogs for hurricane season. And the puppy expert, Stephanie Bennett, owner of Believe in Dog Training, is joining us with five things you can do now to keep your dog safe in case of an emergency. Great to see you, Stephanie. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Okay, I know you have a whole table worth of things, and this is something, I have to be honest with you, this is our first season with Oscar, and so I need this information. I'm so excited that we're doing this segment today because we all have our emergency preparedness kit, our hurricane kit, but we can't forget our, our furry friends. Indeed, indeed, and it's not that hard, really, but it is something that we tend to forget. But if we're just a little bit prepared, it can be really easy, and, and we can uh, make sure that they are taken care of also. And these, Stephanie, these are very common sense, basic items like non-perishable food, you know, like food in a can, of course, a can opener, water. But can you just sort of list out the items that we should be including in this pet emergency kit? Sure, sure, sure. So uh, certainly whatever kind of size bag you need, obviously according to how many dogs you have and all that kind of thing. So this could easily fit into a backpack just depending on how much you need, obviously. So um, first thing is, of course, some non-perishable food. Uh, non-perishable food, you can use your own kibble, but you would have to replace that every two months because it does expire. So non-perishable food, of course, like you said, if it needs a, a can opener, then you need to pack a can opener also. Of course, one of the most important things is to make sure if your dogs take any kind of meds. I have two old men, so they take a lot of medicine now. So make sure that you have at least a two-week supply of their medication so you have that. 
And then of course water. I mean, you need water for the family and water for the dogs as well. Um, we try to say a two week supply, that is a lot, but if you have a two week supply, then you're probably gonna be covered. Um, and then of course you need some portable bowls so that you can, with your uh, food and water. Um, and then uh, certainly um, I always want to make sure that I've got my heart guard and my flea preventative. Uh, because when it rains, obviously the mosquitoes are really bad. Mm. So you want to make sure because heartworm does come from mosquito bite. So make sure that they are always up to date and that you have your preventatives. And then of course, a dog first aid kit. Um, you can get these right on Amazon, no problem at all. And they've got all kinds of cool stuff. This is a little book about dog first aid. Uh, and I've got all kinds of very, very useful information. Um, and then of course, if it's, a, if it's a surprise, obviously I want to have extra leashes. I want to have poop bags, cause that's going to be a thing, poop bags. And then of course, extra collars just in case. Or you could use a slip lead uh, because a slip lead is a, is a leash that also includes a collar. So you have one and, and the same. Um, and then comfort items, of course, so that you have some kind of a blankie that smells like home, hopefully a toy, a chew, things like that that can help comfort your pet in your emergency kit. Because they are, just like us, creatures of habit. So we want to make sure they're comfortable in a scary situation. Um, you also recommend proof of vaccinations and microchipping our animals, of course. We feel like that's a no-brainer, but that needs to be driven home. For sure, for sure. And so if you can ca carry a little chip, I mean, obviously we all have our phones all the time. And so having your proof of vaccinations and a current photo of your dog on your phone would be great. But just in case you lose power or whatever, it would be good to include in your emergency preparedness kit, a little drive possibly that has their uh, current photo and their proof of vaccinations. Because if you go anywhere, uh, almost everybody is going to require proof of vaccinations if there's gonna be other dogs around. So that's a really important one to keep them current. Because oftentimes we kind of, oh, we, we run late on their preventative or we go oh, the, the vaccination is due but we, we have time and all that stuff but that's really really important stuff to keep updated right now because you never know obviously and also of course always wear a collar with identification on it even if they have a microchip just in case because that makes things a lot easier if they always have a collar even if they wear a harness I think Oscar wears a harness for mm -hmm. walking and things even if he wears a harness, just having a regular collar with uh, identification uh, ID tags on it would be very useful and helpful just for emergency sake. Oh yeah, then any neighbor can call that number and reunite you with your, your pet faster. Stephanie, you recommend that this emergency plan sort of extends beyond the walls of your home and that you reach out to friends and family who could potentially board your animal and also scope out some pet friendly hotels. Yes, I think we all learned, you know, with uh, especially a Harvey and all of that, that, you know, making sure that you are aware of what's around you, because certainly it is, where am I going to do? Because if you've got pets, you got to go somewhere that's going to accept them. So make yourself familiar with what is around you. Are there relatives, you know, that are going to be around you that you could possibly stay with that will accept your pet? Where are the pet friendly shelters? Um, are there pet friendly hotels? There are lots of pet friendly hotels these days, thankfully. Uh, but of course, they're all going to want current vaccinations. Uh, but make yourself familiar familiar with that so you have an idea of what's around you and where you'll be able to go so you're not just stranded with your dog. And we're looking at some of the video of some of these cute little guys uh, in their <laughs> crates. And that's the important thing is that we also need to make sure that the crate is the right size and that you have it accessible if you need to leave or you need to leave your pet with someone. Indeed, because it's a real big thing because a lot of times uh, after we through potty training, we stop crate training or we never crate train at all. But it is really important because if they do have to go into a shelter or a hotel or any Airbnb and probably any relatives homes, they're going to have to be in a crate. And so it's real important for them because it's going to be kind of crazy and everybody's going to act, you know, we're going to act very, uh, we're going to have emotional emergency going on, which can also freak out our dogs. So if they are very familiar and safe in a crate uh, with a blankie that smells like home, it's going to help them so much it will help you so much and then you won't have to worry about wherever you go you know that your dog is going to be safe and he'll have a safe place to stay uh, and he won't have a problem with it that's a real big one Oh my gosh, look at that little corgi on the screen right now. These dogs are so adorable. And we can't stress it enough, Stephanie, that when it comes to emergency preparedness and hurricane preparedness, the time to make a plan is before the disaster hits, not when you're right in the middle of it. That's right, that's right. I even saw that they were having emergency kits, pet kits on Amazon. Like you can buy the whole thing with all kinds of different stuff in it just right on Amazon. So it makes it real easy for you just to make sure you have the basics and you have a plan. Just grab that bag and run with your dog. Well, Stephanie Bennett from Believe in Dog Training, the puppy whisperer, as I like to call you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today. It's great to see you and always wonderful information.
Thank you so will, much, guys. See you, next. see you soon. We will have tips on our website, too, to share with you. Very nice. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back on this Friday Eve. Earlier in the show, we asked people essentially to let us know what type of wine they would be yeah. if they could be a wine. And we've been getting some pretty great responses. Let's throw them up on the screen there. There's Sherry saying she would be a Sherry wine for obvious reasons. I love it. I do too. That Very is so funny. perfect. And Gina says I would be a buttery Chardonnay because it's strong and tasteful. Oh, nice, nice Gina, Gina Hoffman. Very good. Pamela says Cabernet Sauvignon because I'm full bodied and have a dry and dark sense of humor. Plus, I pair well with chocolate, and I originate from France. Very <gasps> nice, Pamela. You sound like a lot of fun. I know. I hang out with you. Hopefully, you're on the wine club group. Uh, and Jennifer wrote in saying, my security board with the emoji <laughs> face. I love it. From last night, and a glass of buttery Chardonnay, not pictured because... You know, because she was drinking it. That security board looks good, girl. It does look really good. You know, yeah. Brandon and I follow a lot of accounts. Me too. On Instagram. Yes. People who create these incredibly beautiful charcuterie boards. So search it. Just use the hashtag like charcuterie board. Yeah. Or cheese board on Instagram. You'll find a ton of them. So good. And so easy to replicate too. Just, you know, just outsource it. Easy. Really. It's not easy. I, I mean, find it very difficult. It, it is difficult. Mine looks like a disaster every time. Okay, when it comes to food and wine pairings, our next guest takes the cake. Literally, Tangie Patton is going to reveal what pairs best with comfort foods like chocolate cake. Ooh. Oh, yes. Well, welcome back. We've got to get the weather story. Meteorologist Eric Braid is standing by, and I know you're busy in the weather office. Yeah, we've been watching the tropics for a while now, and we've got tropical depression number eight in the Gulf of Mexico. That's on everybody's mind, not obviously affecting Galveston today. It's very quiet, kind of the calm before the storm, 89 degrees, feeling like 100 in Galveston, so the heat danger is quite high. You may want to dip your toes into the Gulf of Mexico to cool off. Temperatures low to mid-90s here in southeast Texas. The feels like temperature in the hundreds. Yeah, it's summertime here in Texas. So low to mid 90s throughout the afternoon. I think we plateau as far as temperatures go. Just a few showers down in Matagorda County right now. But here is tropical depression number eight. 35 mile per hour current winds as of the 1 p.m. advisory. Should make landfall south of Matagorda Bay early Saturday morning with 50 mile per hour winds. Kind of uh, fringe effects for us. Rain is going to be the big issue, I think, going forward. Uh, three to six inches probably along the coast. One to three inches probably around the Houston area. Some rough surf, definitely some high tides associated with this, but the wind is not going to be an issue. So we're looking at late Friday and Saturday as really the days that were impacted by this. Uh, street flooding, certainly a potential with the rain associated with this. Rain tapers off second half of the weekend into early next week. Uh, temperatures, though, over the weekend, guys, a little cool in the 80s because of the cloud cover, because yeah. of the rain. So that's one of the benefits from all this. But we're just going to be watching those uh, pockets of heavy downpour for minor flooding around town. Absolutely. All right, Eric, thanks so much. Very nice. Keep those rain boots and the umbrellas handy indeed. Okay, shifting gears now. So earlier we talked about wine and cheese plates, but if you don't have time to create your own, our next guest has some ideas for some comfort food wine pairings like... How about these cheese crackers, oh, Courtney? Oh, my word. And we're talking cheeseburgers, a grilled mac and cheese sandwich, even cheese crackers. Our girl, Tangie Patton of Good Taste TV, is here to explain. We're just going to eat and drink. You can talk. <laughs> Ready, go. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're talking cheese and wine pairing, but we're doing it in a way that maybe is a little more um, friendly with the way we're living right now mm -hmm. because everything is kind of turned upside down, right? So I wanted to pick some comfort foods. Every once in a while, we need to treat ourselves because we're dealing with so much other stuff out there that I thought would be fun. So I've got a bacon cheeseburger. I mean, when you think comfort, who doesn't love oh, a good wow. word? Um, I don't know about you guys, but this uh, toll on our restaurant friends, Bernie's Burger Bus is a huge loss. Yes. And uh, I still have such fond memories of my favorite burgers there. But if the burgers like you'd get at Bernie's are a bacon and cheese burger. You've got lots of great rich flavors going on. Of course, you've got the meat, but you've got that savory, salty bacon. You've got the ooey gooey melted cheese, right? So I like a Malbec. And I think 
A Malbec gives you that deep, rich flavor of some of the dark fruits, maybe the dark cherry, a little bit of plum, but there's some little bit of a smokiness and spiciness on it as well, and a little bit of acidity. So it kind of cuts through a lot of fat on the burger. I love this one. This is Clos de los Siete, Argentinian grapes, a rock star winemaker from France, Michel Galland. Um, it's just a fantastic wine. It's less than $15 a bottle. It's a perfect, hamburger wine. And this is the wine, TNG, you dropped off at our studio, so we're sipping it now, and it's easy to spot yeah. the star on that label. Oh, it's a beautiful bottle. I mean, everything about that wine just sings. I mean, there, it, it hits it on all points. Price point, taste. Um, mm. The winemaker truly is world-renowned. It's a great wine for less than $15 a bottle. So you can get that one at your favorite wine store. It's it really phenomenal. is lovely. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. Delicious. Yeah, it's a good one. I thought you guys would like that. I wanted y'all to try it. So think grilled cheese, love it. Mac and cheese, another awesome comfort food. So we've combined the two. Oh, so say hello to the grilled cheese with mac and cheese. Wait a oh, minute, Tangie. So I'm not losing my mind. This is what I had said earlier. Yes. Actual mac and cheese on a sandwich. Yes. Genius. Yes. It can be done. And it's fantastic. And so you've got so much richness with the butter, with the, the mac and cheese, and then the cheddar that you melted on or whatever cheese you choose. I chose a sparkling. So sparklings, again, bright, effervescent, lots of acidity. They're going to cut through a lot of the fat. If you buy champagne, you're going to spend probably $50 or more for a truly wonderful bottle. But you don't have to go to Champagne to get a great bottle. I love this one. This is JCB. Hope you guys can see the label okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a Cremant de Bourguignon. So Cremant being, it's not made in Champagne, mm -hmm. but it's just out there in Burgundy. And same process that they make Champagne with. The grapes just aren't go grown in the Champagne region. So hence, they don't get that brand value. And the price is quite a bit lower. This is about 19, 20 bucks a bottle. Oh, at yes. HUB. It's fantastic. It's nice. a great go-to sparkling. Okay, so we're trying to be sort of healthy right now, right? Because I don't know about you guys, but the COVID-5 has definitely been in my house. I, <laughs> I did buy, I was one of the guys that went on Amazon and bought um, elastic pants. So, <laughs> true story. <laughs> true story. So I wanted to have a salad, but I wanted to add a little bit of comfort to it. So what I've done is add some crunchy little, I don't know if you guys can see this, yeah. some crunchy little chicken tenders. There's a phenomenal brand, and Courtney, with, with your boys, you probably already know this. The ATV has these little uh, breaded chicken strips. Yes, yeah, I've had that they're, brand. Yes, I, they're so good and crunchy at home. They are. Like I'm a restaurant a quality. Chicken nugget fan, but let's face it, if you have kids, you're serving a lot of chicken nuggets all sure. the time, right? Mm -hmm. And it just makes the salad feel a little more comfort food. And so I pair with that a Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio's great salad, um, wines all the time. This is a really good find at HEB, the Luna de Luna, mm -hmm. uh, carefully cultivated in Italy, as it will tell you on the label, but it, it really is. It, it too is less than $15 a bottle, and it's just bright citrus flavors, a lot of, um, it's got that racy acidity you want with the salad because if you're doing a vinaigrette, it can be a little challenging to pair the perfect one. Okay, the cheese snacks we've all been talking about. <laughs> Probably have some of everyone's favorite, you know, snacks around, whether it's the tortilla chips with all the cheese or the little square ones that are popping up here and there, cheese that you name it, they're everywhere. These are actually, if you're doing the snack thing and you kind of want to elevate it with a little bit of wine, these things go with almost anything. They're good with the Chardonnay. They're good with the sparkling. They're good with a Pinot Noir because you really get some of the cheese flavors. Um, cheeses in general pair better with white wines. These are even good with beer. I mean, whatever your, your snack passion is, those little cheese snacks are probably worth the calories this day and time. So let's think chocolate. One of your viewers said she thinks of herself as chocolate. So two, two options, a Cabernet, a Cabernet that doesn't have a lot of strong uh, tannins. You want something a little more mellow. This is the Sagelands Cab. This one too is available at HEB and it's a Washington State Cab. 
Washington State cabs in general are a little bit softer than their Napa counterparts. So they go really well with chocolate. And you can always do a sweet wine. There are some folks that that's all they want. And right now, I'm a big believer with COVID around, let's have what we want. Um, this is the San Antonio Winery Cardinal. Now it's a little deceiving, San Antonio Winery, but the grapes are actually coming from um, California. Mm. So it's, but it's sweet. So this is a great dessert wine. Anytime you're doing a dessert, you want the wine to be as sweet as, or sweeter to make it all kind of work together. Oh, interesting. That's a good tip. And yeah. when we're talking about uh, chocolate, Tangie, I know that can mean a lot of different things. Are we talking milk chocolate, dark chocolate, extra dark chocolate, semi-sweet, what? Well, oh. in my life, there is only one real chocolate, and that is dark chocolate. <laughs> but there are those that will differ with me on that. But <laughs> honestly, the milk chocolate has, is sweeter than dark chocolate. So a dark chocolate that's really rich with a little bit of the bitterness that comes with natural cow beans and all that, um, you you can get away with a cab. A Merlot is probably a perfect choice as well. And that Sage Lens Cabernet has enough cocoa notes in it that I think it would work very well with the dark chocolate as well. I love it. We're keeping it real with good wine and some <laughs> proper snack foods, Tanji. It's always great to see always. you. <laughs> Sweet with just a little bit of bitterness, like our personalities, right, Courtney? <laughs> Tanji, thank you so much. Take that. <laughs> thank you for the snack. My Cheez-Its are pretty much gone. As a reminder to our viewers, you can find Tanji's wine and comfort food pairings on our website, HoustonLife.tv. And by the way, don't forget to catch Good Taste with Tanji Saturday and Sunday mornings on KPRC Channel 2. Right here, set your DVRs for 5.30 a.m. That show always makes so me good. so hungry. <laughs> and coming up next, we're going to check in with Lauren Kelly, who's at the drive-in at Sawyer Yards. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Movie theater popcorn. She also has their latest movie lineup, plus where you can get food and drinks contact-free, of course. Once you're there, we'll be right back. Welcome back. If you've mi been missing going to the movies lately, how about enjoying a contact-free movie experience? Our friends at Rooftop Cinema Club are behind the drive-in at Sawyer Yard. It is such a cool idea, and it's the perfect way for guests to have a safe, away-from-home movie experience without actually leaving their own vehicle. So let's get out to Lauren Kelly, who's live at that drive-in. And Lauren, I know it's the middle of the day time right now. It's middle of the day, so tell us how all the magic happens at night. All right, guys, so I am sitting here in the back of my own car. I've got the trunk up, and let me just show you what this theater looks like. It's totally outdoors, totally social distant, and they have tons of food. It's BYOB. You can bring all of your own things, or you can purchase it online. It's all contactless. It's brilliant. And I'm going to walk on over to my friend, my good friend of many years, Eric Carrera. He is with Rooftop Cinema Club. I'm going to be socially distant from yes, you. Yes. And he's got the full rundown on what viewers and fans can expect when they come out for the experience. Hey, Lauren. Yeah, it's so good to be with you again. Um, yeah, so we have our contactless theater. It is open here in the Sawyer Yards area, if you guys aren't familiar with. Uh, we're right here next to Buffalo Bio Brewery, and movies are two nights a week. Uh, we've got your family-friendly version on uh, starting around 8.30 each night, and then 11 o'clock after that. And as cars pull in, everybody has made sure they are socially distant even in their car, correct? That, that's correct, yeah. So we are, that's where this whole idea was built on. It was supposed to be about safety, about fun, and have a way night out to, for the family, for a date night out. And so everybody must be in the car with their masks um, around. If they get out of their car, they should have their masks on inside their car or even on the roof of their car. They don't need a mask. All right. Okay. Let's get into the important stuff here. Now, Come yes. on. We're going to so walk on over to the food, right. the concessions. Now, we talk about people ordering food online. There's tons of different options yes. and snack options. And it's all done through texting. So if your order is ready, yes. you can walk on over That's here right. and pick up all of your concessions and all of your food goodies. 
Um, I see the popcorn. I see the snacks and the drinks because yes. it's beautiful at night, but it's hot at night, and it's, people like to enjoy a movie with popcorn. Well, you have to have the popcorn to go with the movie. That's exactly right. And so you can you can order from your phone on when you're in your car, and then you just come by, pick it up. We text you when it's ready. Uh, this is all part of that contactless experience. So there's no money exchanged uh, here. It is all done online. We have our all of our concession stand snacks that you want. There's a food truck on site as well. You can order from Buffalo Bayou Brewery. Uh, there is a ton of options. And look, or, Bayou Brewery is like right there, you guys. It's not far. We're right. not talking about a place that's super far away. It's legit right there. <laughs> but the other most important thing is BYOB. Can there you, you go. Why? Yes. So okay. as part of that, to, to make sure that it, well, we keep costs down, right, during this time, is people can bring you bring whatever you like with you, uh, your own drinks, your own food, your own snacks. But if you don't, if you need something uh, that you left popcorn at home. Okay. Whatever. All right. Come get so, it here. All right. I know that when I go to the movies, I might have to take a little bit of a bathroom break. And they've got us covered, ladies and guys. And these aren't just your porta potties, yes. your standard porta potties. These are actually yes. very nice. If you want to just open it and take a look, they are ready. And they will impress you just as nicely. And they have everything marked off so that you are standing socially distantly apart. So everything, they've got all grounds covered. And what I want to mention, Eric, yes. if we walk back over here, when people come and they sit out, you guys, it's right there. This is the part that people will be seeing the movie theater, not where it says Mahatma. So it's on a blank canvas. If you bring out different things, you can post up in the back of your car with your snacks. Look at that. We have some guests already. They have patio furniture. What a great idea. So yes. don't go anywhere. We're going to show them a sneak peek of what the projector looks like and date night info coming up. This is so cool. We'll see you after the break. Don't move. You guys, check this out. Open seven days a week. Rooftop Cinema Club presents the drive-in at Sawyer Yards. And I think this is a brilliant idea. See those silos right behind me? We are actually facing what your car would be facing as if it were to drive in. And my good buddy with Rooftop Cinema Club, Eric Herrera, is here with us today. He's going to tell us about the movies that have yes. just been released for the month of August. Yes, so we just put out a whole new list of movies for the rest of August, so up through August 16th. If you are looking for tickets, they are still available. Uh, we are going to have shows like coming up this weekend. We've got Grease. We've got your rooftop uh, favorites such as uh, Selena. We've got uh, Fighting Dory for the kids. Uh, Shrek that's and Coco yes, are on there. Yes, in fact, and then um, starting uh, actually August 11th, we are going to have the new Bad Boys movie, uh, Bad Boys for Life. Uh, it's been so difficult having uh, getting some of the newer movies out, given the time we're in right now. We're working on that to get some more out here and uh, and just kind of enhance that experience as we can. All right, Eric, when people yes. want to go buy tickets, where can they go online yes. to get them? The best place. Uh, two, well, one thing is you go to rooftopcinemaclub.com slash Houston. If you want to be the one of the first to find out about when tickets are available, you want to sign up for the newsletter there or follow us on their social media sites. And what's really cool is it either is a family night, a friend's night, or a date night, and yes. there are some specials for that. Yes, yes. So we just started a $20 date night. Uh, so from Sundays through Thursdays, we have $20 tickets, uh, which are in comparison to your normal tickets, they're normally $20, $28 per car. All right, so $20 for you and a date to come enjoy a movie Sunday to Thursday at our 11 p.m. show. So it's the, it's the later evening. Uh, it's still under the stars. Great backdrop, as you saw. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And the BYOB and the concessions yes. and the food remain open. Everything will remain open still through both showings. So it's, it's again, two showings, seven days a week. Okay, what I'm looking at behind you, I yes. think, is the main Let's attraction. Let's go look. It looks like a big box of popcorn. But this, you guys, is actually the projector on what is going to display the movie. Yes. Now, for those who have projectors in your house, I'm very, very jealous. But there it is right there. You can see it. It's a 100-foot projection onto this silo right here. And what a better way to see a movie than right there on top of that. I mean, like, I've always tried to do that yes. in my house. But, <laughs> number one, I don't have a projector like that. And I don't have a screen like well, that. Well, and it's the backdrop. You have right here, you've got the city lights, skyline right here behind you. you got, you're under the stars. Great open field. Everybody's spaced out and having a good time. Too. So let's talk a little bit about yes. the rules really fast. Yes. You do have to have a mask when yes. you are opening your car door and going to places like the bathroom That's and right. the concessions. Yes. You want to have your mask on when you're leaving your car. That is just our hard and fast rule. Pretty easy. 
Um, otherwise, you bring anything you like with you in your car. You don't have to have your mask on when you're in your car physically. Uh, but, but things like if you want to bring, uh, there's pool toys uh, we've, uh, or pool floats and whatnot make great mattresses to sit on. Who knew? Enjoy. I know. We would have thought about this stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, your portable AM, FM radio to pick up the sound from the movie. Oh, right. So yes. people can log on to the FM dial right. and hear the audio if you can't really hear it. Now, is yes. there audio broadcasting that they can hear? Yeah, from there's, yeah there are some speakers positioned throughout. And okay. usually you can hear the, the sound from other people's cars. Okay. However, it's just a matter of whether or not you have your car on or not. Awesome. Right? Thank you so much. I really oh, appreciate pleasure. it. Give away to everybody. We are six feet apart. Rooftopcinemaclub.com slash Houston for more info. And this is so cool. I'm going to have to buy my tickets yes. for probably both showings tonight Please, if yes, possible. Yes. HoustonLife.tv for more information. We'll see you guys later. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Eric. We'll be there. My family and I will be there later in August, so I'm excited to go there. It looks so cool. I knew this was happening. We drove by a couple weeks yeah. ago, and we were like, wait a minute, what's happening? It's so, so fun. So we can't wait to go check it out. Definitely well. do it. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but stay with oh, us, and after oh. the break, we'll take a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, Cheers. Courtney. We'll be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, Ask Chefs Anything. We'll have the 411 about a fantastic auction where you can get 30 minutes with your favorite chefs. Money raised will support immigrants working in the Houston hospitality industry. Very cool. And uh, tomorrow is National Tequila Day? I guess so. I mean, we're going to have a recipe for you to celebrate, and it may even have <gasps> an Astros twist. Home opener tomorrow uh -huh, happening baseball's for Astros. Back. Looking forward to that. I know. Well, in the meantime, enjoy uh, the wine if you have some at home. And if not, don't forget you can call Postino and hook yourselves up for Wine and Cheese Day happening on Saturday. That's right. We have a few comments because we asked you, oh, I guess we're not going to show those because we have nine seconds left. <laughs> now we but, have five seconds left. Yeah. But Three, you know what? It was a great show. Two, See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.